In this video, our three characters, Emma, Norman and Ray, have to escape an orphanage. What looks like a beautiful and blissful home full of loving siblings and the lovely foster mom at first, turns out to be a breeding farm where children are bred like livestock is. And then, once fully developed, fed to demons. Uh... Now the demons in this world are real gourmets, as they are only interested in big brains. Therefore, the orphanage puts a lot of effort in developing the kids. In fact, they put more effort in than real life schools. The more intelligent a kid becomes, the more valuable it is, which basically is the opposite of our reality. Of course, our three main characters are the biggest brainies in here, and this will lead to a fun chess game between them and those that run the place. At the very beginning, none of our kids know any of the truths behind this establishment. But if we're honest, those neck tattoos gave it away the second we've seen them. I mean, having borderline facial tattoos with a font reminding me of uh, GTA characters, making up a five-digit number as if they were inmates of a federal prison... I don't know, man, that stuff is uh, kind of suspicious. But they are kids and they have never experienced anything else but what's happening in there. So I can't blame them for not realizing that they carry numbers just like livestock does. Although, that is definitely a red flag. Now whenever a kid is being adopted, that kid is actually fed to demons. And the next victim in line is little Connie. When Emma and Norman realize that Connie forgot her precious teddy bear, they venture out to give it back to her. Just when they have arrived at the main gate and for the first time walk past it, they come to realize that the real purpose for their captivity isn't what they thought it was. Duh. I would probably freeze in terror and stay down there plus get caught in a quick second. However, if I were in that position after having not jacked off for a week, I would rise up like Superman would, high kick that demon in its face, run up to that bitch with my well-trained Naruto run skill and then roundhouse kick her into oblivion. After which, I would pick up her knife like a Fortnite weapon and then clear that whole place imitating only use me blade. Boom. Done. But that's not how this works, okay? First, I don't have the budget to film that, and second, this is a feature film and not a 10 minute Ackerman skit. But hey, perhaps we will get there one day. So, our two characters are able to escape before they're caught. They get back home and have to digest what just happened. Can't blame them. But one thing is clear, they need to escape. ASAP. Not just that, but they need to escape with as many kids as possible. And so, the preparation begins. Whenever you need to escape an unescapable place, you need to act cautiously and steady, just like Andy the Friends did. Prepare diligently, but don't let you be exposed, right? The best way to do that is, befriend your enemy as if you were trying to get that promotion from your slimy and ungrateful boss. Emma has a hard time doing that, and we can't blame her, she's just a kid. Ever since she has seen that whole thing last night, she's been on edge. She's almost losing it when looking into her foster mom's eyes the next morning. That woman literally breeds children here. How many of our dear friends and siblings have we let go throughout the years, thinking they were living a good life out there, when in all actuality their brains were slurped out like monkeys in foreign restaurants? This is a terrible situation, and we need to get out of here. But there are challenges we need to beat first. First of all, our prison is surrounded by a massive wall. Pretty steep wall as well. If we were only a handful of people, that would borderline be okay, but not with over a dozen children. Also, Mama seems to have a compass that can locate each kit. Although, if we're honest, that thing looks more like something to find the Dragon Balls, which, not gonna lie, would solve our problem instantly. So, not just do we have to climb a steep wall with a dozen children or so, which is impossible to climb unless you know how to manipulate your chakra, but I guess we don't, so we need to take use of either a good old rope or find something that is also known as a letter. We also have to avoid being located by that radar thing, plus somehow escape giant monsters that want to eat our brains. Sure, let's do this. Now at this point in the movie, our protagonists find out that their mother is aware of their plan. The fact that she has blatantly shown the power of a radar to find each kid by just one glance was an act of war. But it also shows that she's overconfident in her ability to keep us under control. That buys us time. Before we continue to beat this movie though, with the help of Mike Tyson I might say, let's look at our characters next moves. They need to convince the other siblings, and that's a challenge, because it's risky. Because if just one kid makes a tantrum, we are screwed. The thing is, 
one of the main rules in this orphanage is that without hard evidence of our conspiracy, mom cannot contact the HQ for intervention. So as long as we stay low key, we are good to go. So three major things happen next. Ray joins the game, the third and last protagonist in this movie. He's another genius and is a great asset to our character's plot. Together, they forge their master plan. By looking for clues in the local library, they find multiple cues hinting at what is actually happening in this world. The story goes like this. Long time ago, demons have overrun humanity. After years upon years of war and killing each other, the humans and demons concluded that there must be a better way. A way for both of them to coexist without the need of constant war. The problem is, the only thing that demons can eat are human brains. Yes. This conflict sort of reminds me of the conflict in Tokyo Ghoul, although here they solved it more politically correct. I guess that's what happens when you release a movie in 2020. Anyway, to settle that conflict, the world was split into two halves. On the demon side, human children would be bred in various orphanages. As told at the beginning, each kid will be served as a demon-style Thanksgiving turkey before the age of 16. Essentially, they were born to die. Now this would frighten me, but it would also give me kind of hope. Because if we aren't the only orphans out there, there must be dozens of other high IQ children and teenagers that would team up with us if we could contact them. Then we could overthrow that whole demon-human conspiracy here, just like the animals did in Animal Farm. Considering that, our three characters might would do well to escape on their own first, connect with the teenagers from other orphanages, and then free all other kids with one carefully planned strike. I'm talking kids with guns, okay? Kids with guns against massive demon gorillas. I have also found this map online, obviously originating from the manga. Now as we can see, this map is perfect for a battle royale style cleansing. Another interesting point though about this map is, there is literally no other way out than over the wall and then over the abyss. Unless of course, we opt for a revolution and not for an escape. What are you for? Revolucion or escape? Let me know. Now whatever we decide to do, we would first need to get rid of our GPS implants anyways. For that, there are multiple options that we could go with. We could, inspired by Van Gogh, cut off our ears. That would be clean. Or maybe not so clean if I think about it, but it would be simple. Or we could do what our kids do, scavenge items and construct a device that is capable of electroluting our earlobes to short circuit the chip. You can do that if you're a genius. I would do it differently. I would summon Mike Tyson version 28 June 1997 and have this suit bite my ear off. If you gotta escape, I mean you gotta do it with style, right? But it isn't all that easy, because mama knows what's up. So she employs another caretaker who in reality is a bitch. Now, not only is she a snitch, nope, she's also creepy as hell. If a man tried running behind kids like this, best believe he's not just cancelled, he is brand marked for life. The second thing is new allies. Emma, Norman and Ray are able to convince a bunch of other kids about what is actually happening. Together with them, they create a plan on how to escape with the other kids. They plan on using a rope to surmount the wall. So let me recap, we gotta climb a wall, dodge mama's radar, summon Mike Tyson for a second and perhaps, in the best case, exploit the new caretaker's greed to play her out against mama. Meanwhile, we find out that Ray, in order to survive, provided info to mama as a spy. At this moment though, this kind of comes in handy. He traps sister Crone by telling mama about her ambitions, which leads to an early game over for her. A secret that we learn from that incident as well is that each mother of each orphanage used to be an orphan herself. If this is true, then I would dead sure try to manipulate them emotionally. Essentially try to get them teaming up with us by using sentimental slurs that I have picked up by watching average K-drama series. You see, apart from Sister Crone joining the house later in the movie, it was only one person, Mama, that was taking care of this place. That's not very secure if you think about it. We have also learned that it sometimes takes months until another kid is being shipped for death, meaning we have time. Another advantage in corrupting mother lies in her knowing the blueprint of the whole place. With her sneaking out, picking up other orphans in other houses is completely possible. And with an army of high IQ children, a 25 year old I mean caretaker in a maid costume, I really don't see the issue here. 
Now before our kids can make the next move, Mama comes along and shorthandedly breaks Emma's leg. Alright, that's uh, that's kind of savage. If I'd be one of these kids at this moment, I'd reconsider an escape and go for a takedown instead. You could armbar her into oblivion, or smack her hard like a Russian dude in a slap competition. Whatever you do, you need to KO her. Then tie her up, gag her, and then take the kids. I know that doesn't happen, but I know you and me both want to see that. And don't you lie. Anyway though, Emma is taken out. That means no escape for her. At the same time, this happens. Norman's shipment has been set for tomorrow. This is the last moment to make a final decision. What would you do in this situation? Give yourself up for your friends or fight and see what's gonna happen. Now what I would do is probably somewhere on the line of slipping on some juice while being on my way to cut some onions with a big chef's knife while passing mother's bed in the corner room upstairs and then, of course, purely accidental irreversibly injure her to the point of no return. And then I would probably slip over the wall across the abyss until I eventually slip into the human part of this world. Sorry demons, be gone. Jokes aside, there is only so much you can do, right? If you escape, your friends will be shipped instead of you, which is not too bad, but kind of cheap. If you surrender, then it's over, and if you fight, well, you have a chance. Now Norman decides to run away, so he packs his stuff, says goodbye, and goes climbing up the wall. This is the moment where he, for the first time, realizes that there is a huge abyss on the other side, impossible to overcome without a proper plan. He returns, is able to quickly let the other two characters know about the abyss behind the wall, and then gets shipped off. Let's have a minute of silence for Norman. Okay, thanks. Alright, even though we lack one genius now, we do know the last bit of the puzzle, the steep cliff, and that's why Norman is a hero. But our characters do what great characters always do, escape with a bang. Now what they essentially do is hide food and tools around the forest. That's a smart move, because they have been playing hide and seek almost every day in the past, meaning it doesn't appear suspicious whatsoever. Then when the night finally arrives, we get a dramatic performance by Ray. Yep, that's what's up. Every good ending needs a fire. So what happens is, due to the fire and Ray's subsequent death, Mother is so distracted that all other kids are able to escape. You see, Ray next to Emma, and now deceased Norman, is one of the most valuable assets in this orphanage. Therefore, she tries everything trying to get through the fire to rescue him. This is enough time for our kids to make their way to the wall and eventually even climb up. And as surprise would have it, Ray survived as well. Amazing. And here is how he did it. He cut off part of his ear, threw it into the fire alongside some of his clothes and escaped with the others. And Mama, relying onto her children radar of course, wasted too much time to realize what's going on. Now that was a pretty slick move, not gonna lie. I approve. To cross the abyss though, they have thought of a zipline. Of course they have, they are kids after all. Now can we please enjoy the setting of this escape for a second? If I were a 9 year old watching this movie, I would have fanboyed so hard I would have turned into a fangirl. However, as much as I like this conclusion, in my opinion taking out Mama and trying to reach out to the other orphans in different orphanages would have been the ultimate showdown. But the most interesting bit with this ending was when even Mother at last didn't intervene and lets Emma escape, meaning inside of her there was still some humanity left, proving that emotional manipulation could have worked well. Now since you know that I'm into summoning Mike Tyson and caretakers in made costumes, what would have you done? Would you accept your fate as demon food or would you revolt and try to get out of there? Well let me know. Thanks for watching.